G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Aaron and it is a very exciting time in my life right now because I have just sold my law firm and finished up work as a lawyer so I can focus on things like this channel and sharing my movement journey with you to help you on yours. So today, my new rings arrived off the internet. Thank you, internet. I went with the thicker 32 millimeter bad boys. You can also get a thinner version, 28 millimeters, but I've gone for the thicker ones this time around. And they also came with some nice thick straps and a nice chunky buckle. So makes it easier to put up and play on. Today, I'm gonna to go through some of the strength work I'm doing on the rings and share that with you. So let's get into it. Okay, first things first, we gotta set these bad boys up. So as you can see, I'm using my pull-up bar at home. I would rather it if I had a higher place to hang the rings from so that my head doesn't hit the bar and that I can flip upside down without hitting my feet, but this is the best I have at home. So as I said before, the thick straps and the thick buckles make it so much easier than the skinny ones. Once they're up, test them out, make sure they're level, get a feel, good to go. The next thing I like to do is a warm up with a broomstick for the shoulders. Notice the hand position here, the palms are facing forward while the broomstick is behind me. And I like to do 20 reps of these. I'll usually have a break and do two sets just to really warm the shoulders up. I'm trying to put all my energy and focus into the shoulders and minimize the spine and hip movement as much as possible just to really waken up those shoulders and make sure they're ready for the for the hanging and the pulling to come okay guys a tip be very conscious of the elbows if you're just starting out on ring work or you're really diving into ring work, elbow tendonitis is a risk. It's a thing, I've had it. I didn't know what it was. I had a sharp pain on the inside of my elbow. I just kept training, training through. It got really bad there for a while. This was a few years ago and it took a long time to shake it. So it, you can get over it, but it's a lot of effort to get out of it. So if you're getting pain, in the inside of your elbow or the outside is tennis elbow like a sharp shooting pain when you're doing your pulling it's a sign of tendonitis which is an overuse strain of that tendon that attaches to the little bones on either side so you can do some drills to warm up uh, which i'll show in this video and also really make sure that you're engaging your lats so i like to do some slow squeezing lat drills to make sure my lats are firing and that my arms aren't overcompensating on the pull and putting too much strain on those elbow tendons. So stay very careful of it. There are things you can do to get rid of it if you have it, but be very mindful of it because it's tough to shake. Okay, so this is probably my favorite elbow preparation drill to help avoid elbow tendonitis. The hand positioning is really important here so you need to get that set up right. You'll have to copy my hand positions from the video if you're gonna give this a try at home. But as you can see, the working arm, which extends out, goes through a full rotation and that elbow gets flexed through all different angles. To make it slightly easier, you can rotate your body from side to side. Uh, it makes it a little easier. But basically what we wanna do here is really wake up those elbows and you can really flex the wrist to make sure that your elbow is benefiting from the full range of motion. Then you wanna do the other arm. So it's a bit confusing at first, but once you get a head, your head around this movement and you can just allow the dowel to slide through the supporting arm, you can really wake up those elbows and this can really help prevent elbow tendonitis. I'll usually do 10 reps on each side for two sets, usually sufficient to wake them up.
Here's a second drill I like to use for the elbows. This is a great prehab to avoid elbow tendonitis. It can also be used to treat tendonitis depending on which side you have it determines which side you might focus on. You can also add some weight to increase the load if you need. I do both arms. I'll usually do 10 reps, two sets. The next part of my warm up is a passive hang. I'll do a 60 second hold and then have a break for 60 seconds. Then I'll do another 60 second hold just to really warm up the shoulders. Then to encourage my lats to engage as much as possible. Again, this is really important to avoid the biceps trying to take over too much, which can lead to that tendonitis we're trying to avoid. Um, I'll do three mega slow reps just on one ring and really emphasizing the squeeze of the lats at the top all the way through the movement just to really activate those lats. The final part of my warm up is the front support hold. This is a resting position in gymnastics language, but it's actually quite active for me anyway. So it might not win any gymnastics competitions, but it's a great way to warm up the arms and shoulders. Notice the arms are straight and the palms facing forward. I like to point the toes to create tension through the body. Then it's on to your humble dip. This is the ring dip. So what I like to do is make sure the feet go out in front of the body. I dip as far down as I can, touch my shoulders or my biceps on the rings. And then I like to finish in that front support position by turning the palms outwards. I did two sets of 10 regular dips. Then I moved on to these bad boys. Ring turned out dips. These are far more challenging than regular dips. As you'll see, the rings turn outwards. The toes go behind the body, which means the head and chest come further forward. It's very challenging on the chest, shoulders, and arms. And I'll do five reps of these for two sets. I took a 90 second break. Then I just did some chin ups where I'll try to touch my thumbs on my nipples if I can and squeeze at the top a small hold. I'll do five of these as cleanly as I can, two sets. After chin ups, I did some muscle ups. Today, I wasn't feeling these overly well, so I only did a couple of reps for three sets. Really trying to focus on going slow on the way down and really trying to control the descent. Then I had to play with these L sit to shoulder stands, which are extremely challenging for me. I have a lot of trouble with these shoulder stands, so they need work. But I did a couple of uh, sets of these, just singles. I don't know if you can see, but it's just starting to rain. It's quite nice actually, but uh, these timber rings, they do not do well in the rain. Trust me, I've left a set out in the rain before and they, they basically fell apart. So if you get the timber rings, make sure you take them in when it rains. Then I played around with this little combination, L-sit muscle up into front support hold, into L-sit, into shoulder stand, and then to really challenge myself, I tried to lower down into that hollow body position, not overly well, into front support hold. And then I tried to leave the back up into that hollow body position, but still a little challenging for me. So I think I did three or four of these uh, attempts with this combination, which was enough to really gas out my arms. This was probably my better one of the day. It all needs a lot of work as you can see, but this is where I'm up to at the moment. It's very challenging for me and I just enjoy it. Uh, 
Okay, so in between sets of rings, I thought I'd come and show you some of my other favorite tools, exercise tools to use in between sets. So let's take a quick look, shall we? Okay, now some of you may not be familiar with these tools at all, but uh, let me tell you, you can get a great workout by digging holes, that's a matic. You can also use a shovel. Shoveling is incredibly taxing. Uh, we have the humble grass rake, rake up the leaves. And then we have some metal rakes there too. And what you can do is you can rake up the stuff in your yard and beautify your own environment and get fit. So, you know, there's the piles of stuff I've, uh, I've collected. And my dream is to beautify this back pocket of my property and turn this fairly uh, unattractive swamp into a thriving oasis. So in between sets, I'm doing some gardening, you know? Uh, it's a great, it's functional fitness, right? The ultimate functional fitness. So I think we just forget how easy it can be. So food for thought. Okay guys, the humble wheelbarrow. If it's too easy for you, let down the wheel. Just let it go flat, look at that. Makes it a hell of a lot harder. Just kidding, I didn't really let it down, it just went down out of pure neglect and now it's broken so I just use it like it is, drive it hard, get fit. I did three attempts of these, which was the L-sit muscle up into front support hold, then into the front roll trying to really slow it down and control that front roll or forward roll, I should say. I did three sets of those. Then this is something that's very challenging for me, the backwards roll. I'm using a band here for support. As you can see, I'm not quite getting the hand positioning right for these, but I did four of these singles just to try and get the movement down. That was all the ring work I did today, and I finished with these, which are pronated and supinated curls with my back against a post to really drill home this care I need to take for my elbows. I've had elbow tendonitis before, and I do not want to get it again, so I try to keep those tendons strong. You pick a load that's light. This isn't hypertrophy. This isn't muscle building. It's just to keep those tendons healthy. So I'll do 10 reps of those, two sets to finish. Well, that's it from me today, guys. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and stay tuned for plenty more to come.